Well, good morning, everyone, or good evening, depending on where you are from. Uh, my name is Gabrielle Dolan, and uh, we're here on this um, thought leadership webinar. So, if you've got any questions at all, you can um, just put it in the chat, and I, I can then unmute you and we can have a discussion. But what I want to do today is talk you through um, what thought leadership is, uh, what it isn't, and um, talk about uh, some of the aspects of thought leadership, who, who benefits from it, um, and then discuss my um, two-day thought leadership intensive program that I run both publicly and run internally for organisations who want to, um, who are serious in thought leadership. So as a bit of a backstory, I guess, I, um, for some are familiar with my work around storytelling, but I, um, I started uh, teaching people storytelling about almost 14, 15 years ago when I left National Australia Bank. And it'd be fair to say that I really had no idea what I was doing. I'd, you know, never run a business before. I'd worked at NAB in, you know, technology and change management roles. Um, so I was starting from scratch. Um, I had no one. I was a complete um, unknown. Okay, I've just got a thing on the chat. Can everyone actually mute themselves? Because um, there's a lot of background noise in what I'm hearing. So I actually... Don't worry, I've just uh, muted everyone. Thank you, uh, the two people that did that. So that should uh, fix that. Excellent. Um, so yeah, so um, I, I, storytelling wasn't even a known thing and I was an absolute unknown. But over the last 14, 15 years, through a lot of hard work, um, I guess I've become known as, uh, you know, an, one of the experts, global experts around um, storytelling and a thought leadership in this space. I was, um, about eight years ago, though, I came across the methodology and the work of Matt Church, who's the founder of Thought Leaders Global, where I met both Matt Church and Peter Cook, who now run Thought Leaders Business School. And what they taught me, the methodology they taught me how to develop my thinking and to really go about this thought leadership space seriously, it completely changed. It completely changed my business. It, um, it, 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 the sales just quadrupled in about a year. Um, what, I was, what it taught me was to think in a different way. And because I was thinking in a different way, I was developing content in a much more thorough and unique way. And, um, you know, and my mindset changed because of that, the way I sold changed because of that, because I came from a place of service and not a place of selling. The quality of my delivery, so when I ran workshops or writing, um, it, it really changed. And I, what I knew is that I could teach a lot of my clients how to do this, especially my very corporate clients that taught them a way to think better. So I became one of the handful of um, partners around the globe that I guess are licensed to train um, Matt Church's and, and Pete Cook's uh, methodology, which is thought leadership. So um, I, when I became a partner, what I... Uh, sorry, I'll backtrack. I won't go on to that. I won't go on to that. That sounds a bit boring. What I want to do, though, is um, talk to you about... What is thought leadership? So before we do what it is, it's really important, I think, to do what it isn't. And what thought leadership isn't is content marketing. So I come across a lot of organisations that say we're already doing thought leadership, that we have, you know, a selected number of people who are doing thought leadership and all they're doing is content marketing. Now, to me, the difference between thought leadership and content marketing is content marketing, you are writing and talking about stuff that your company is doing. There always seems to be a bit of a sell to everything. Um, and the only thing you're referencing is the stuff that your company's doing. So to me, that's content marketing and it's not thought leadership. The other thing I hear people say is that, yes, we've got our thought leaders because we have our subject matter experts. Being a subject matter expert does not 
consist does not make you a thought leader. It's a really good start. It's a really, really good start um, if you're thinking about being a thought leader to be a subject matter expert. But what subject matter experts are, they're normally known within their company, but they're not known broader than just their company. So they know their staff, they're good at it, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're a thought leader in the space. What thought leadership also isn't is doing media training. So again, I have some um, clients who have suggested that they already have thought leaders because they have a handful of people that have been trained to speak to the media. These are completely different roles. So any large organisation will have um, media spokespeople who have been specifically trained in media training, which is, which is really to how you deal with journalists. Um, they've been, this is not thought leadership. You still need those people, but they, they're normally um, speaking to the media and reacting to current things that are happening with the company. So not thought leadership. Thought leadership also isn't about just being active on social media. So again, I have, I have some companies saying we want, we want our people to be thought leaders. So we're sending them on social media training. Now to me, that is putting, you know, the, the cart before the horse because what, what are you social media about? What are you contributing on social media? You need to be really clear on what your thought leadership is before you start, you know, telling your people they need to be a lot more active on social media. And finally, what thought leadership isn't is I had a thought once. So uh, Matt, Ch Matt Church often says this, thought leadership is not I had a thought one ship. It's, it's, you know, and it's not about I wrote an article once or I was asked to speak at an event once. Thought le leadership is constantly developing your ideas and, and leading the conversation through that, so putting your thoughts out there. So enough what it isn't. Let's move on to what it is. So... What it is, it's actually been known for knowing something. So this is where it's slightly different to a subject matter expert. So a subject matter expert might be known for knowing something in the company, but a thought leadership is known for knowing something much broader than the company. They're, and even in a lot of the times, much broader than the industry you operate in. But they're, they're sort of known as the experts, the, the gurus in this space, and they're actually known for that. Um, I often talk about that you, you can't call yourself a thought leadership. Thought leadership is a title that someone has to give to you. It's like you don't, you don't decide if you're good looking. Other people decide if you're good looking and you don't decide if you're a thought leader. So other people will do that and they'll do that if you're known, if you're known to them and being known to them is, is important. The other thing what thought leadership is, it's um, to me it's coming from a place of service. So this whole concept, concept, and I guess where it varies from content marketing, where content marketing is a, you know, it's a very much a marketing and, and selling concept where thought leadership is coming from a place of service. Now, of course, it's commercially smart. Of course, if you're known as the expert and, you know, it's a commercially smart thing to do, but the mindset for me is coming from a place of service, which sort of leads to what a thought leader should be doing uh, a thought leader should be doing, and that's providing really valuable content to your tribe. Now, if you're, what I mean by tribe, it's it's just the people you serve, and it doesn't, um, you know, doesn't even. You just sort of got to think of who are the people that would find what I know of value. And to me, I think come from a place of service to them. You might go, you know, you might even I do in my training, I talk about just think of 10 people and, you know, the 10 people will probably be 100 people and I'll probably be 1,000 people and it might even grow to hundreds of thousands of people. But just provide valuable content to your tribe and know, know who your tribe is. So know who you're writing for and who you're in service to. The other thing what thought leadership is, it's being strategic and it's being consistent. So... It's not about writing an article once every six months. Um, it's not about writing an article on um, organisational culture and then writing an article on growing tomatoes. So you've got to be really clear on what is it you want to be known for and, and make sure that the vast majority of what you write and talk about that is supporting that. So people, people aren't confused, so people don't get confused. Now, you can, you can have two things. I'm known for, predominantly I'm known for storytelling, um, but I'm also, you know, increasingly known for, I guess, thought leadership, which is, it's a bit 
thought leadership around thought leadership is a bit weird, but you know, you, you sort of could have two things, but most people just focus on the one thing and another thing might grow out of that. And I think the other thing that's really important and what I look for, and this is, I guess, starting to think about um, if it's right for you, is that thought leadership is bringing together both your expertise and passion. So, and I think one of the key things there is passion. I think um, expertise, you can, you can build your expertise and stuff, but you've got to be really passionate about what you want to be known for. Um, I have a lot of people that come to my training who are known for one thing, but they don't want to be a thought leader in that because they're no longer passionate about it. They're, they're just really good at that. So that's fine. You can still be really good at that, but it, if you're not passionate about it, then don't make that the basis of your thought leadership. Um, it's, it's been thought leadership is about I'm good at something, I'm really passionate about something and I'm good at something, I've got some expertise, but I know I could develop my expertise. So you don't have to be the world leading expert because you develop your expertise. There's a lot of quotes that go around about what thought leadership is and um, I like this one from Elise Bauer, who's the marketing blogger of SimTech and Apple fame. And... Um, she talks about the thought leadership is the recognition from the outside world that a company deeply understands its business, the needs of its customers and the broader marketplace in which it operates. So a couple of phrases there I like. It's, the first one is it's recognition from the outside world. So again, this is not you calling yourself a thought leader. This is other people recognizing that you are good at what you do. And from the outside world is from outside of your company. I, I, I also replace that the company deeply understands also with the individual. So if we're talking about this is at, on a broader company level, you want to be known for this, but a lot of you, it might just be at an individual level. So what, you know, thought leadership is the recognition from the outside world that you deeply understand its business the needs of its customers and the broader marketplace in which it operates. So I, I, I really like that quote. So let's just have a look about um, why do it. So why do thought leadership? I, I think there's a couple of really commercial benefits um, around thought leadership and there is no doubt that increases sales. So if you're running your own business, it will absolutely, it's a way to increase sales. If you're running, um, if you're a company, a larger company, and you're thinking of thought leadership for your team, then increased sales is, is a benefit of that. It actually increases your profile. So again, from an individual perspective or a company perspective, it can in increase your profile. When I do work with companies, um, it's, it's how they rose, raise the profile of a selected few people, but by default, it's raising the profile of the company. And what both of those, do, especially the profile, it leads to increased opportunity. So I talk about in my training, it could be increased, inc this is all about increased profile and increased opportunities. Now opportunities to you might be more sales, but opportunities might be global speaking gigs. Opportunities might be a better job. Opportunities might be um, being asked to speak on a regular basis. Um, opportunities might be literally just increasing your profile so you don't even know what opportunities will come your way, but there's more chance that they will come your way when, you're, when you've increased your profile and your presence. And, and to me too, it's, it's just having a greater impact. So, you know, I, I could just do training workshops and I can have a great impact on the people that come to my room, but with, you know, writing, with speaking, I know I can have a much greater impact on a greater amount of people. So again, to me, this is what thought leadership is about too. So knowing, knowing what you have is of value and, and, you know, seeing as many people that could find the value out of that. So it could be worth now just having um, a look at who typically does thought leadership um, and who's it for. So uh, what I find is that this, training, this program is really valuable for 
people depending on where they are and where it is really valuable is business owners. So business owners who I guess are working towards an exit strategy after selling their company on business. Now this might be, you know, a, a five year plan or even a 10 year plan. And it, and it should be a long term plan because you're not going to become a thought leader in three months. So the reality is, is when, if you're, a, if you're a business owner, so a small business owner, or small to medium business owner, increasing your profile by default increases the profile of your business while you're there. But then once you sell the business, you are still known. Like you, you thought leadership doesn't get taken away from you. So you're still known as the expert in that space. So some people do this as a bit of an exit strategy from their business. The other thing is where people want to really increase their presence on social media. Um, but they want to do it in a really strategic manner. So, you know, if you're in there liking and sharing and commenting and, and publishing, you know, your own content, being really strategic about what it is you want to be known for um, and making sure that your social media activity is not scattergun approach, but it's actually really targeted, targeted at what you want to be known for. The other thing we've talked about, it look, there's no doubt it increases sales. I mean, this not everyone will be doing thought leadership for this, but um, for business development managers, uh, you know, for people running their own company, the more you're known, the more you're known as the expert, it will absolutely increase sales as more people are aware of you and they come to you. And also, um, because of your credibility, you know, the, sometimes money is an issue and you can actually charge a higher rate than your competitors who are not known. We often talk about um, in the speaking world, if you've got speakers who have a book and who are known as experts in that field, command a much higher speaking fee than people that don't. So it absolutely does increase sales. Some people just do it for industry influencing. So a lot of people, um, and this is a lot of my work, you know, senior leaders in corporates, they just want to increase their influence in the industry. They, they perhaps want to get on a board. They perhaps want to um, get invited to more um, speaking opportunities. They just, you know, they, so they're doing it just purely to increase their profile and their influence. Some just want to be, want to serve their customers better by providing valuable content and thought provoking content. So I have a lot of people, um, again, in large corporates that just, they want to do this because they want to develop their thinking. They know they've got value to add, but at the moment it feels a little bit um, sort of all over the place. So they just want to develop better um, content more valuable content, both for their employees, so both from an internal perspective, if they're doing a lot of presentations, for example, um, and to their customers. This is really created to that, and they know that they just want to learn to, to get valuable content out there. You've really got to develop the way you think. This is, it, it's funny, probably a lot of people don't do it for this reason, but this is doing this actually helps with everything else. So one of the things I notice in the process and the, in the process you learn in the program is to how to really develop your thinking. And I know, I know from experience that once people get their thoughts out of their head and I teach them a way to really develop their thoughts, they look at what they've got out of their head and what they have now in front of them. And there's this mindset shift of this is really valuable. And, and you know, people could find this of value. Even a handful of people have find, find it of value. Some people come are interested in thought leadership because they actually just want to increase their ability to speak. Um, now, I'm, this is not a public speaking program, but what I know for a fact that if your content is thorough, if it's, really relevant if it's quite unique and you know artic you can be articulate with what you know it'll make you a better speaker um, if you want to get move on to get a you know paid professional speaking gig I think the the best the first step you do is develop your content so you know what you're talking about and then you know if you want to take your speaking to a next level then you go and you know invest in you know speaking training which is what I certainly did quite a few years ago um, to develop my my um, my stage presence I guess
And then just overall, people who just want to increase their profile. So not only to have a greater impact internally, but also externally. So a lot of people are doing this, you know, that not for sales, not to run their own business. They just want to absolutely increase their profile internally. So all this works as well, because what I know for one thing for sure is if you increase your profile externally, it absolutely increases your profile internally. Um, I, had a, I had a client who came and did my public workshop from Monash University and this was his pure intention to increase his profile internally. He never used to post anything on LinkedIn because that, he thought that was to increase your profile externally and after the program, I convinced him to start doing that and he has just been blown away by how much posting stuff on LinkedIn on a regular basis has dramatically increased his profile internally within, within the university. So that's good. If, if you have got a question as we go through, um, feel free to write it out, but I, I am probably going to go, you know, talk about the program now and then I'll open it up for questions. So um, we might just do that. So the, I'm run um, a two day program and I just want to take you through what this looks like. As I said, I, I'm, you know, I'm a partner with Matt Church and Peter Cook and they run a 12 month thought, thought leaders business school, which some of you may have heard of. Um, I'm, I'm on the faculty of thought leaders business school. It's an amazing program. It goes for 12 months. It's um, every quarter, for three days, we call them three day immersions where people come into the room and work on their business. There's a huge amount of video, all the curriculums on video. So they, they follow a flip class um, concept where you learn all the stuff through video. You come into the classroom and really work on your thinking. You get mentors. It's, it's, it is an amazing program. What I know is that a lot of people don't either can't afford the time or the cost associated with that. So it is, you know, it's 12 days out of your year and it's 25,000 plus GST. Um, if you're running your own practice and have been running your own practice and want to take it to the next level, I would highly recommend you look at that. Um, and I can provide details on that. But this is what I know is a lot of people either don't have the time or the money to invest in that. A lot of people are thinking, I'm not running my own business, so I, but I do want to start developing my thought leadership. Or for companies internally, it was like, you know, how do we train up 12 of your best and brightest and make them thought leaders? So this is where I try, I work with a lot of models. I tried a lot of things. And, and what my clients were telling me is that they loved the look and feel and the time commitment of the thought leadership intensive. Um, so it's a two-day program. What you, uh, what you get is pre-work. So pre-work to help you be really clear on what it is that you want to be known for. So um, the pre-work, one, one of the main questions of the pre-work consists of if you had to write a book, if you had to write a business book in two years, what would the title and subtitle be? So the pre-work is really just helping you getting clear on what you already know and what you want to be known for. Um, like I said, it's a two-day face-to-face workshop. Currently, um, I just run them in Melbourne and New York because, you know, if you're just going to choose another place out of your hometown, you might as well choose New York because apparently, I don't know, someone told me if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. So it's Melbourne and New York. I normally run three in Melbourne a year and one in New York. Um, then, and I'll get to the next one in Melbourne it also, so besides the two days, it also has um, three live webinars. And so this, uh, this is after the event. So we go, you know, at week, roughly about week four, week eight, week 12, after the two days, I run webinars, people check in, how you're going, what's working, what's not working. It's a little bit of an encouragement for everyone. Um, it sort of gets everyone motivated again. I always record them. So if you can't, if people can't make any of them, which... A lot of times we can't, that the recording is just sent out. Um, there's ongoing support and access to the member only alumni LinkedIn group. So I set up this LinkedIn group. Um, it's been really cool how that's grown. So for each cohort, I take through this program. And I, and I should also mention that I max the cohort to 14. So this isn't, you know, there's not like 50 people in the room. Um, I, I sort of think that's a really nice number where I can get around and help each individual. 
Um, Because during the two days, you're working on a lot of, you know, I'll teach you stuff, you you work on your own stuff, you present it back. So the smaller numbers actually really allow some really one-on-one learning. And what that does, it, it, you know, it sort of makes the cohort quite strong. But what I've what I've noticed with the uh, the LinkedIn group is over the years, pe- as people join the cohorts and, you know, from Melbourne and Sydney and New Zealand and New York and all, all over America, actually, that it becomes this really lovely support group. So, you know, for example, if you want to write a LinkedIn post, but you're sort of, you know, that tentative thing of pressing publish, you know, put it on the LinkedIn group. People, you know, give you feedback, give you, you know, give you that little push to go, go press publish. So that's... um. That's working really well. I've been really happy with how people have uh, really getting value out of that. Um, so that's my public program. And for companies, I design tailored in-house programs. So, you know, some companies just due to time only do a one day. Other companies do the two days. Other companies do, you know, they do two days, but then they want, you know, they want to build in storytelling and presentation training and all that type of stuff. So we build it out to, you know, a six or 12 month program. Um, so any, if you're thinking of any um, tailored in-house programs, then it, like I said, it's, it's absolutely tailored to your needs. So let me just quickly go through the next program. So the next program is in Melbourne. Um, it's on the 12th and 13th of September. Um, the cost is 3,600 plus GST, and that includes the two days plus the three live webinar, webinars. And I, I should actually say the three live webinars is part of a 12 week, a 90 day support cro- program. So you do, after the two days, it's emails from me with you know additional content, additional resources that you can find really valuable. Um, and like I said, that ongoing access to the LinkedIn group. So we have, um, We have 14 spaces. Uh, There's already, I think, four already booked in. So we have about 10. Um, And it it just literally comes on a a first in, best dressed basis. At this stage, I will not be running any other programs this year. I don't think. There's a slight chance I might run one more. But at this stage, the calendar, my calendar is looking pretty pretty full for the rest of the year. So um, at this stage, this is the only one scheduled. Uh, and yeah, we run them in Melbourne CBD. So that's that's sort of all the information I wanted to share with you. Um, if anyone wants a question, just put it into chat and I will unmute you and uh, we can have, I can talk about anything you want. Otherwise we can call that a wrap you can all go on with your busy day okay all right this is what i might do just for the last because there's quite a few people on the phone who probably can't even type in the chat so i'm going to unmute everyone so everyone's unmuted. So this is your chance. If you've got a quick question, just uh, tell me who you are and and call it, and um, I'll answer it. But otherwise, all sounds good. Hopefully, um, that's you've joined the program to find out a little bit more about it. If you're really interested, uh, you know, simply um, send. You can see at the bottom there, send Elise an email to I can have a quick chat to you or if you want to register. So just send a, uh, Elise an email at elise at gabrieldolan.com. You can register for the program or you can just put your name on the waiting list. So the 12th and 13th of September, you may not suit you with dates, so, but you might be interested. So simply get on the waiting list and, and all we'll do is uh, notify you of the next program, either in Melbourne or if you're looking for an excuse to uh, get to New York, I'll notify you of the next New York one. So thanks everyone for coming. I hope you found that of value and yell out if you need more information.